<clears throat> good morning good morning what's going on you beautiful people it is 306 a.m i am on my way to the gym right now today i i get up and i listen to a bunch of different things i, I it, for me for me listening to something motivational something inspiring uh allows to quiet those voices and and, and, and I, I feel for the individual who wakes up in the morning and goes straight into their day. Um, that's a rough situation. But I woke up this morning and for some reason Martin Luther King was on my mind. So I started listening to his, uh, his, his last, his final speech. The one he gave in Memphis, Tennessee back in 1963. And one thing I did not know about Martin Luther King, and my mind starts racing through all these different thoughts as he's talking about um, uh, racial equality, as he's talking about um, the struggle, as he's talking about the different stages and levels of things, as he's talking about uh, the, the little girls who were uh, uh, caught in that fire in that church. As he's talking about all these different things, I couldn't help but sit there and think, this man done been through a lot. I mean, done endured through a lot. And how many people would actually make that same sacrifice uh, where it didn't necess it wasn't necessarily just for him, but it was for everybody. How many people would have stood up and said, hey, um, that's not right. Even nowadays, even when you see something going on, a lot of people won't stand up and say, hey, that's not right. And then I started thinking about Kennedy and I started thinking about uh, Medgar Evers and, and I started thinking about some other individuals um, who have been in similar situations as him, Abraham Lincoln. And as I'm thinking about it and as I'm listening to it, I had no idea that Martin Luther King had been stabbed. Now, me, I'm that, I, I, I love the generation or the age that we live in because technology allows everything to be instantaneously delivered to us. So I went straight to Google and I started Googling. I'm, I'm starting to think, well, what white person stabbed him? <laughs> Wrong or right? I started Googling it. It was a black lady. I had no idea Martin Luther King had been stabbed. I mean stabbed. The New York Times wrote a post that said that had he sneezed, that that knife would have severed an artery that would have caused him to bleed to death had he had sneezed that close. And then I started thinking about Jesus. And the Bible and, and, and church, they always taught, pick up your cross. Now, for you guys who don't know, Jesus was forced to carry his own cross to the mountain. That's, uh, that's not figuratively speaking. But when you're taking things into contents of when they say pick up your cross, what it means is to carry your burdens. The process. The things that come along in life. The things that throw you off. The things you don't like pick up your cross and when I started thinking about Jesus I started thinking about Martin Luther King <clears throat> start thinking boy you really got to be committed to to progress at any cost And then they paid the, the ultimate sacrifice for what they believed, which was death. 
Now, I'm not saying everybody has to do that. I'm, I don't... Sometimes you have to have a martyr in order to make change. Sometimes you have to have a martyr to make change. Sometimes you have to pick up your cross. Sometimes you have to carry the burden. But if there was something that was common amongst all those people, especially the ones that got assassinated, murdered, they did it without complaining. Martin Luther King got stabbed by somebody of his own color. I mean, that messed me up. I looked it up. It was a black lady. He said all he remembers is somebody saying, are you Martin Luther King? He said, yes. He was looking down. He was at a book signing. Next thing you know, he said he felt his heart racing. The example is, is that you're going to have to carry the problems that come at you without complaining. And sometimes you're going to have to carry them to the point of great extremes. Here's one thing I keep in mind, especially with the growth that, that I pray for that I'm seeing is that it will make a change. I mean, obviously, I'd, I'd love to stay alive and, and, and I'm, I'm far from death, but keep something in mind. My grandfather died at 56. My grandmother died at 83. So keep something in mind. Tomorrow's not promised. So as much as I would love to enjoy the fruit of my labor, absolutely love it. The end game is that my children's children will benefit and their children. I was driving down the street and I was looking at my wife and I, I, I told her, I said, I said, imagine what we're doing right now. Our kids would never have to deal with it. I mean, literally, if we made a, a clean change, if we instilled some new values. If we rewrote history, imagine that our kids' kids' kids will live a way that was completely foreign to us. I mean, at least to me and, and my wife for the longest time. Imagine. Like, that's a real goal. But the price of that is not cheap. 
And if you think you're going to get there without having to pick up your cross, without having to bear your cross, without having to burden the cross, not too many in history have ever made a change in life without making that sacrifice. So all you really got to do is like David Goggins, ask yourself, what are you doing this for? And just make sure that your reasons are so compelling that it will push you to the point of of, of limits that you thought you, you you had and then allows you to go past it and keep carrying your cross keep bearing your cross keep going no matter what <laughs>